Let all the earth remain silent for them. Let us stand together. Let us stand together as we sing our congregation to him. Glory, glory. Don't treat me like they since I Somebody say burdens out. Central. Hallelujah. Isn't, aren't you glad to be into a new year? Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. A year of expectancy. A year of God doing a do-over in our lives. I don't know about you, but I'm excited to be able to see 2017. Hallelujah. A year of new possibilities. A new, a year of second chances and third chances. Hallelujah. We have so much to thank God for this morning in this brand new year. Yes. Hallelujah. And I just want to take a moment and just recognize for our morning prayer is going to be done this morning by Deacon Bobby Wright. Amen. Let us pray. Most holy, everlasting Father, yes. it's again, dear Lord, we come in the ominous way that we know how. Father God, this first Sunday in a new year, Father God, we just thank you. Father, we had 10,000 tongues. We couldn't thank you enough. Father God, we thank you for all the many blessings that you gave us in 2016. But now, dear Lord, we look to 2017. Father God, for we don't care who in the White House. Father God, for we know that you sit high and you look low. And Father God, we know that you can do anything but fail. Father God, for these your people, we ask for life, health, and strength in 2017. 
Father God, we pray that you just lift up our pastor, Father God. Bless Pastor Ezel, Father God. Build him up where he's torn down. Keep him strong, dear Lord. Bless his wife, Cookie. Bless his two sons, dear Lord. Father God, just hold him in the hollow of your hand. Father God, we ask that you bless the bereaved families all over the land. Bless the sick, bless the shut-in. Father God, just bless this country. Father God, as we go into 2017, we need your grace and your mercy. Father God, we just thank you, dear Lord. Father God, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you for Jesus who died on the cross that we might have the tree of life. Father God, we love you. And we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. Father God, you're worthy of all of our praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We thank you, choir, for the selection, the congregational selection. And Deacon Bobby Wright, we thank you for the sincerity of your prayer. And as folks are coming in, we want to take a moment and, and recognize those who may be visiting with us for the very first time. If this is your first time in our sanctuary worshiping with us, would you please stand and be recognized? Well, amen. Again, good morning, Central. Hallelujah. And we're just excited about what God is about to do in this new year. And at this moment and at this time, um, as we continue on with the worship service this morning and just reflecting on God, we're, we're going to go ahead and open up for praise and worship with our choir. So sit back, relax, and enjoy.
again, thank you, choir, for setting the atmosphere for worship this morning. I tell you, it's nothing like having good music to prepare the heart for preaching and for enjoying what God is about to do in the house. Amen. Thank you for that. And I know I said at the beginning that this year, this 2017, is an opportunity for a do-over. And it's not just a do-over in just one part of our lives, but it's a do-over in every part of our lives. Things we may not have done in 2016, we get a chance to redeem ourselves and do it different in 2017. And that also includes our giving. Hallelujah. Because we have to know and understand that, you know, it's just not about the giving, but it's about the obedience. Hallelujah. God expects us to be obedient in every part of our life, including our giving. So we just thank God for the opportunity to give back a portion of what he's so richly given to us. Hallelujah. And we do that through our tithes and our offerings. Amen. So those of us who are able to stand, will you please stand? And let us bless the offering in advance. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we just thank you. Before we ask anything of you, we just want to come and say thank you for allowing us to see a brand new year. Hallelujah. We just thank you for the opportunity, God, just to be in the midst, God, that you thought it not robbery to give us breath, to give us life, to give us activity, and give us the ability to give back to you. Lord, you've been so good to us. And we just thank you for this opportunity to give back just a portion of what you've richly blessed us with. Lord God, we thank you for those who have been faithful in 2016. And God, we're standing in expectancy for those to remain faithful and for new people to become faithful in 2017. Because we know that if you're, we're faithful to what you, we've promised for you to do, God, that you will honor the request that we've asked you to do. And we say thank you. Lord God, we ask you to bless those who have given their tithes and their offerings and those who have also been faithful in the capital campaign, God. We ask you to bless those who have the heart to give, but not yet have the resources to give. And God, I ask you to richly touch mightily those who have neither the heart nor the resources, God, because you are a God that is more than able to do more things than we can even ask or think, God. And so if they don't have it now, God, we know that you will provide the opportunity in the future. And Lord, we ask that everything that's given be done to be used to bless and honor your kingdom. And this we ask in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Will the two outside aisles turn and face the wall and the two inside aisles turn and face one another and follow the direction of our senior ushers?
Amen. Thank you, Central, for what you've so richly given back to the Lord. I just want to take a minute before we go on with the program, and this wasn't a part of anything that I was supposed to do, but I just wanted to take a minute just to recognize our pastor on today. Many of you may not know, but today is the day that he celebrates his 20th pastoral anniversary, being pastor of the Central Baptist Church. So if we would, just please stand and recognize one of the greatest pastors anywhere, our very own Reverend Ricky Ray Ezell Sr. Now y'all know he might get me after that, so <laughs> pray for me. <laughs> but I just wanted to also take a moment to recognize those ministers who are worshiping with us this morning. If you would please stand after your name is called. Reverend Kenneth Wilson. Amen. Amen. Reverend Flossie Montgomery. Amen. And you don't have to stand, but if you want to, Reverend Clarence Atterbury. Amen. 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 Thank you. And next we'll have our scripture reading this morning by Deaconess Tony Wright. Today's scripture is coming from Acts, the ninth chapter, verses 10 through 16, and it reads, And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias, and to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street, which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Taurus, for behold, he prayeth. And have seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. And Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he hath done to thy saints at Jerusalem. And here he hath authority from the chief priests to bind all that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will shew him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. The word of God for the people of God.
church say amen. I've got a right to praise him. I'm going to praise the Lord. And sometimes the choir comes in with you got a right to praise him. Amen, somebody. For he is truly worthy to be praised. Let me thank the Reverend Carol Phillips for presiding for us on this morning. Amen. And my heart was warm when I looked out and all of saw Deaconess Leo Green out there. Deaconess Green, God bless you so much. Good seeing you. Stand up one more. Praise God for you are looking so well. Amen. Praise God for you. It's good seeing you. Amen. I'm going to call you on the telephone and we'll talk, but it's good seeing you. Amen. And you look well. Amen. Virginia is treating you excellently. Amen, somebody. Praise God for you. Thank you so much. Amen. You were standing. Was that something you wanted to say while you were standing? Uh, we give respect to our elders. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Ninety how many? Ninety eight. Oh my Lord. Amen. That's a reason to celebrate and praise him. Amen. Yes, ma'am. He kept. <coughs> yes, ma'am. We're so glad you're here. God bless you. Good seeing you. Amen. 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 We thank God so much for her and the spirit that the Lord has placed within her. Amen. Amen. The book of Acts, chapter 9. I think I want to look at verse number 13. Book of Acts chapter 9 and verse number 13. And it reads as follows. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard many things of this man, how much evil he has done to thy saints at Jerusalem. Let's go on to 14. And here he had authority from the chief priests to bind all that called on thy name. Verse 15 reminds us, but the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and king and the children of Israel. I'm going to put a tag on this sermonic thought on the first Sunday that I'm still here. New year, new beginning. I'm still here. Exit out of 2016, making an entrance into 2017. I'm still here. Maybe battered and bruised, tossed and driven, but I'm still here. Had my share of good days and bad days and hard times, but I'm still here. And that's reason enough to celebrate. If we don't have anything else to celebrate, just making it out and making it into is a reason to celebrate that, I, that I'm still here. Every day has not been a good day. Every month has not been like the month of May, but I'm still here. Because I'm still here, I have a reason to celebrate because this is the day that the Lord had made and I will rejoice and be glad in it because I'm still here. See, somebody's missing that right now. It's just a joy to know that I'm still here. I could have been cut off a long time ago, but, I, but I'm still here and I'm still standing. And that's a reason to give God praise and that's a reason to give God God glory that I'm still here. Is anybody glad just to be here? Anybody glad just to be in the number? Anybody glad just to be able to wave your hand one time and praise the Lord one time? It's reason enough to celebrate that I'm still here. Let me give you a little background on this text. Last in 2015, December 31st of 2015, watch night service, the Lord had given me this sermon to preach. But I'm still here. 
at my house around 9 o'clock, 9.30, finished getting dressed, ready to make my way to the Central Missionary Baptist Church in order to preach this sermon. While getting dressed, received a phone call that shook the foundation of my world. Quick, I don't mean to relive the moment. I know you're hurting, you're in pain, but I want to try to help somebody through what we had to go through. See, I'm a very private person. I don't like a bunch of folks up in my business. Amen, somebody. But many times through what you've gone through, when you share, it could be a blessing to help somebody else when they are going through. Amen, somebody. Uh, I'm trying to let you feel my heart today. Uh, on December the 31st, it was like a, like a, like a challenging day of ups and downs. Trustee Govan, if you will remember, that's the day that we closed on the property at the shopping center. We had just closed, we were celebrating, working on a deal for a year, just closed. Uh, now I'm at home getting ready to come to make the announcement to the church that we closed. And I received a phone call that my baby boy had passed away. Now the Lord had given me the word to preach, I'm still here. But the Lord did not release it to me till a year later and said, can you still preach with power and conviction after the foundation of your world has been shaken? I want you to know that in spite of it all, that, that, I, that I'm still here. And, and, and then when I arrived at my son's apartment and my Rick and Dorian, with, Rick and Brandon was crying over here, Cooker was crying over there, and in the midst of it, your pastor, your father, your counselor, your shepherd, but you minister to everybody else, but who minister to you? I'm trying to help somebody here. That, that, I'm, that I'm still here. And on the edge of 2000, I'm trying to get you to where we are now. Uh, at the first part of 2015, in January the 28th, I was in Boston, Massachusetts, on the 37 inches of snow. A day later, I received a phone call that my oldest brother, who I was close to, had passed away in Fort Valley, Georgia, and requested that I do his homegoing services. So I flew back from Boston to Charlotte, drove back from Charlotte to Columbia. Cook and I got on a car in Columbia, drove to Fort Valley, stayed a few days, and then the church came down. I preached my brother's homegoing service, preached it on Saturday, drove back on Saturday night, was in church on Sunday morning, preaching two times, etc. Here yeah, I was having, uh, going through grief, but not taking time to grieve because I'm saying that Lord has entrusted the church, that the family into my hand, I gotta minister to the people of God, but then you gotta realize that you're a human too, while, while you're trying to minister to everybody else, you gotta take time out and minister to yourself, because just like you're ministering to hurting people, you are hurting yourself. Uh, and then a week later, my sister, who was at my brother's funeral, passed away. Guess what I did? Got in the car, drove the, 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 the Fort Valley, stayed there a few days, preached her service that Saturday, came back that Saturday night, preaching in Central again on that Sunday morning. Here you are going through, being busy, taking care of everybody else, but never taking the time to grieve yourself. Uh, and that happens in life. And, uh, and then in July, I had surgery on my foot, was out for four or five weeks, uh, wearing a boot all the way around. Cooker had surgery on the shoulder. We went through so much that year. And then I'm here today to tell you that I'm still here. That, that I'm still standing up. You say anybody here ever been through stuff that could break your foundation but you can testify if it had not been for the Lord on our side. Somebody tell me where I would be to I come boldly before you early telling you I'm still here. I'm still here because I know God is able. I'm still here because I know that God is still in the blessing business. I'm still here because I know he can do anything but fail. And the Lord has not brought me this far in order to leave me. Somebody said to me last week, they said, Pastor, it's coming up on the anniversary of your son's death. Uh, how are you holding up? Uh, I told him I'm not holding up. I'm just holding on. I'm holding on to God's unchanging hand. Uh, 
Is there anybody here ever been there that you just got to hold on to God's unchanging hand? Uh, I'm not superhuman. I hurt like anybody else hurt. I'm, I'm holding on to God's unchanging hand. But it's holding on to the precious memory of how Dorgan lived his life. Uh, I remember teaching him how to shoot his jump shot. I remember teaching him how to hold a baseball bat to hit a baseball. So I still have those precious memories. I remember going to games together. I remember shooting hoops together. But I'm still here. I'm still standing. I'm still hurting. I know God is able. I, I feel the prayers of the righteous. I felt the prayers of the church. And somebody was praying for me. Somebody was praying for cooking. Somebody was praying for our family. But I'm still here. And there's somebody here today. Your world was wrong in 2015 and 16. But you can still give God the praise. You can still give God the glory. Because the Lord is worthy to be praised. I want you to know I'm still here. Let's look at the text on the day. Let us examine this text. Great things are happening in the fledgling little church in Jerusalem. Thousands are being saved and God is blessing them with miracles and his power. I want you to know that God is still in the blessing bidding and that God still works miracles. That is the bright side. On the dark side, a man named Saul was wreaking havoc in the church. You can find that in Acts 8, 1 and 3. He was traveling from place to place, persecuting the early Christians. He was having them arrested and even participating in their death. In the midst of this, the Lord in his grace saved Saul, and he traveled to Damascus to arrest more believers. His conversion was nothing short of miraculous, with the Lord Jesus himself speaking directly to Saul and calling him to be saved. Acts 9, 8 and 9 tells us that after Saul saw the brightness of the Lord, that he was left blind. Saul was led into Damascus, and he was left in that condition for three days. Apparently, Saul spent those three days in prayer and in fasting. Acts 9 and 9. Of course, God did not save Saul to leave him blinded in Damascus. God saved him for a great purpose. Therefore, the Lord spoke to a man named Ananias, who lived in Damascus. And God told him to go to the Saul, go to Saul, that he might receive him. My brothers and sisters, God can use anybody to get a miracle to you and work a miracle through you. I stop by to tell you it doesn't matter your circumstances, your condition, uh, that God is still in the blessing business. Uh, Sometimes things may be so hard for you, but they're just right for God, for there's nothing too hard for the God that we serve. Uh, I've learned how to lean and depend on the Lord. For I know he is my friend, uh, he is my God, and the Lord has not brought me this far in order to leave me. Uh, I want to tell somebody, I don't know what your circumstances were this past yeah, but even though you may have to go through some things, I stop by to tell you if the Lord bring you to it, uh, that the Lord is surely able to bring you through it, uh, that God has not forgotten about you, uh, that God still knows your name and uh, he still knows your address and uh, all you got to do is to call on the name of the Lord. If you call on the name of the Lord, he'll come to your rescue. Uh, do I have anybody here? No, if you call on the name of the Lord, that the Lord is still able. Is there anybody here up under the sound of my voice that know the Lord is still able? Is there anybody here that know the same God that worked for you on your side in 16? It's the same God that will be with you in 2017. How many of you know that he doesn't change on you at all because he has no respect of person? What he's done for others, uh, God can do the same thing for you. Uh, is there anybody looking for the Lord to bless them real good at 2017. Is there anybody that know that the Lord can do what no other kind do for you? I wish I had a few praises here that'll get on board right now. Say, can't nobody do me like the Lord can. Is there anybody here that's a living witness that the Lord is able to bless even right now? I wish I had somebody here that's been through trials and tribulation. I wish I had somebody here that's dealt with some tough time. I wish I had somebody here that your back up against the wall. Uh, won't the Lord do it for you? 
Won't the Lord bring you out of it? Won't the Lord heal your body? Won't the Lord turn you around? Won't the Lord place you on solid ground? If you know that, you know that, you know that, you know that the Lord will do it. Uh, come on in here and give the Lord a hand clap of praise uh, for what the Lord has already done. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise uh, for what the Lord has already brought you. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise uh, how the Lord has already kept you. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise for the Lord has never left you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm still here. Three things I want to share with you. Let's I hold you along this morning. I'm still here in spite of my past. I want you to know I'm still here. Huh? In spite of my past. Uh, 10 through 13 is, and that was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said to him, Arise, get up from where you are, go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire into the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he's prayed. And has seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hands on him that he might receive his sight. Verse number 13, then Ananias answered the Lord. This is what Ananias said. I've heard many things of this man, but how much evil he had done to thy saints at Jerusalem. Other words, Ananias was saying to the Lord, I don't want to be bothered with this Saul. I don't want to have no dealings with Saul. I done heard about him. I've heard how he's gone in and dragged people out the houses by the head. I've heard how he's thrown folks in jail. I heard about how he tried to kill Christians. And now you want me to go to him and become one of his victims? I've heard all the evil he has done. My brothers and sisters, there are many Ananias in our life who don't want to do anything to do with us based on what they've heard about us. Can I tell you something about a past? We all have one. Huh? Nobody is exempt. We all have a past. But there are some folks all up in your Kool-Aid don't know your flavor. They, they, they're talking about stuff about you and don't know nothing about you. Ananias didn't know Saul, but he heard about Saul. How many know you can't believe everything that you've heard? I want you to know that a past mistake does not make you a permanent failure. We all have a past. There are some things I used to hear the old folks say, you just got to take to your grave with you. I wish I had a witness in here. You can't tell everybody everything about you. There's some things you just got to keep between you and the Lord. Second Corinthians 5 and 17 talk about a path. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Talk about a past. Philippians 3, 13 and 14 say, Brethren, I count myself not to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, I'm forgetting those things which are behind me. I'm reaching for those things which are before me. I press toward the mark for the price of the high call of God in Christ Jesus. We're talking about a past right now. Isaiah 43, 18 and 19, so remember ye not the former thing, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now shall spring forth, shall ye not know it. I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Man, I'm talking about doing a new thing. I stop by to tell you I'm still here. In spite of my past, I'm still here. And somebody ought to be able to testify when I look back in my past. There are some things that I've done that I'm not proud of. But I thank God for his grace. And I thank God for his mercy that I'm still here. There are some places I went to, had no business going, but I thank God that I'm still here. I made some mistakes along the way, but I thank God that I'm still here. 
I was riding with a partner. When I got out of the car, found out my partner had a wreck and was killed instantly. And I could have been in the car with him. I thank God that I'm still here. I thank God that I've said some things I shouldn't have said, but I thank God that I'm still here. And somebody here ought to be glad that you're still here. When you look back over your life, we weren't in the church all of our life. But I thank God that I'm still here. I thank God there was some weekends that came around. And we were like Johnny Paycheck. We were living for the weekend. But I thank God that I'm still here. I thank God we used to didn't have happy hour in church. Uh, but it was happy hours at the nightclubs. Uh, don't look at me like I'm crazy. But I'm still here. <laughs> and because I'm still here, I can give God the praise. And I, I can give God the glory. Is there anybody here that glad that you're still here? Is there anybody here that glad that the Lord doesn't keep a record of everything we ever done? Is there anybody that's still here? Yeah, read that God is still able. I wish I had some witnesses out. When I look back over my past, uh, it was nobody but the Lord that kept me. Is there anybody glad that the Lord has kept you? Is there anybody glad that you're still here? Tell them my past can't hold me back. I'm still here. Tell them God has changed me. I'm still here. Tell them I'm not how I used to be. I'm still here. That God is still blessing me. I'm still here. In spite of my pain, I want you to know I'm still here. Second reason I'm still here because of patience. Not my patience, but God's patience with me. God has been patient with me. The Lord had a special mission for Ananias. He wants to use him to reach out to the newly converted Saul. In fact, God had already shown Saul that a man named Ananias would be coming back to restore his sight. To Ananias, this command probably didn't make much sense. After all, Saul hated Christians. He had been arresting them and putting them to death. Now, God wants this man, Ananias, to go to Saul all alone. He wants him to put his hands in that of a murderer. What a strange command. Yes. Often the commands of the Lord do not make sense. It did not make sense for Noah to build a boat in the middle of dry land. It didn't make sense for Moses to strike a rock to get water in the desert. It didn't make sense for God to command his people to march into a heavily defended, defended Canaan and take the land. It didn't make sense to march around Jericho seven times for seven days in order to defeat the city. But that is what the Lord commanded in each instant. As I said, God's commands do not always make sense, but they're always right. They don't always make sense, but I want you to know that they're always right. We should therefore resolve that regardless of whether we understand it or not, we would just do what God said. After all, the Bible says that obedience is better than sacrifice. Now, when Ananias hears the command from the Lord, he balks at it. He reminds the Lord of all the evil things that he had heard about this man Saul. Sometimes we get just like Ananias. We don't believe that folks could change. See, he did not realize that this was a different Saul now after his Damascus Road experience. We look at people and think they're the same like they've always been, but what a wonderful change coming to our life when the Lord enters our life. Notice how he tries to reason with God to find a way to work out of this thing. He simply does not want to do. I wonder if he thought God didn't already know all the things about Saul. I'm sure that Ananias were afraid of what might happen to him if he went to meet with Saul. I think another part of him may have been prejudiced against this man named Saul. After all the damage Saul had done to the church, why should a believer reach out to him? Because God said so. Amen. Acts 9, 15 through 16 reminded, but the Lord said unto him, Go that way now, for this Saul that you're afraid of, he's a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. 
for I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Thank God that he is so patient with his children. He listened to the complaints of Ananias, and then God addresses them by telling his servant that he has special plans for Saul. God tells Ananias that Saul is going to fulfill a very special place in the kingdom work of God. In other words, by fulfilling his request from the Lord, Ananias is going to be participating with God in his work in a big way. I'm so glad that God has been and still is patient with me. So if God can be patient with us, why can't we be patient with one another? I'm glad that the Lord is not through with me yet. For when the Lord gets through with me, I shall come forth as pure gold. I'm glad that my testimony, because the patience of the Lord is that if you don't see me walking right, if you don't see me talking right, if you don't see me living right, just please be patient with me because the Lord is not through with me yet. I don't know about you, but that's good news there, that the Lord is not through with me yet because the Lord is not through with me yet. My testimony, I thank God I'm not what I used to be. And I thank God I'm not what I shall be because how many know that God is not through with you yet? That's enough reason in order for me to celebrate. That some folks may look at you and look down upon you. Just tell them that the Lord is not through with me yet. That somebody that I magnify every mistake you ever made in your life. But tell them that I'm still here because the Lord is not through with me yet. Some folks could tell you every deed wrong you ever done, but tell them that was the old me before I met a man by the name of Jesus. And that the Lord is not through with me yet. Do I have a witness in this building this morning? Is anybody testimony that the Lord is not through with you yet? How many of you know that the Lord is still working on you? How many of you know that God will build a fence all around you? I believe I got some praises in here. When you look back over your life and see where you are now and see where the Lord has brought you from, your testimonials, please be patient with me because the Lord is not through with me yet. How do I know the Lord is not through with me yet? Because I'm still here. And because I'm still here, the Lord is working on me every day because I'm still here. The Lord has given me a new walk and he has given me a new talk because of the Lord is still working on me. The Lord has given me a new testimony. I don't know how you feel, but every now and then I got to stop right where I am and tell the Lord, thank you. Because the Lord is not through with me yet. I have a witness in here. Your testimony is that the Lord is still in the blessing business. He's blessing me right now. How many of you know he's working on you right now? How many know he's blessing you right now? How many know he's making a way right now? How many you know he's opened the door right now? If you know that, you know that the Lord is still working on you. Come on in here and give the Lord the praise. Because the Lord is not through with you yet. I dare you to say he's not through with me yet. I dare you to say he's working on me. I dare you to say I need the Lord every day. I I need the Lord every hour and the Lord is still working on me I'm still here because the Lord is still because he hasn't brought me this far in order to leave me I'm still here because the Lord is still able to do anything but fail. Third and finally, as I get ready to press my way to a close, I'm still here regardless of my past. Uh, there are some folks who act like they've never done anything wrong in their life, but I thank God that he looked beyond my fault and he has supplied all of my needs uh, according to his riches and glory, and he's still worthy to be praised. Do I have a witness in here? Some of us here, all we need to do 
is take an introspective look inside and a retrospective look and look back and see what the Lord has done for us. Nobody in here is better than anybody else. Nobody had the right to hold their head up and look down on anybody. For it had not been for God's grace and mercy. We'd have been cut off a long time ago. But when justice plumbed the line, grace and mercy said, give him another chance. Is there anybody here that's glad about that? I'm glad about it because I know God is still able. And he's still able to do anything but fail. I am thank God for his patience. I thank God that he did not give up on me when I messed up and let God down. Uh, God was right there beside me. I'm glad that God's love didn't depend on how good I was, but God's love depended on how good God was. Uh, there was on times I did some things that the Lord could have pulled his love from me, but I'm glad that he loved me anyhow. Uh, I'm glad that he loved me so much that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him uh, may have everlasting life. Uh, as I press toward the close, I'm still here. I'm still here because of the promises of God. Uh, do I have a witness in here? You can trust the promises of God. Uh, verse 17 says, And Ananias went his way and entered into the house and put in his hands on him. He said, Brother Saul and the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, has sent me that I might receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, the Bible says that he went his way. He got busy doing the things that the Lord called him to do. He was obedient to go to the task. Uh, immediately, Ananias received, uh, Saul received his sight. Ananias went to the house where Saul was. He entered in and touched him. Then he did something that must have touched the heart of Saul. Uh, he greeted him with the word brother, a word of affection. Surely Saul was unsure as to what the future held for him. When the Jews found out that he had received Jesus, they would hate him. But surely the church would hate him for all the things he had done to them. Saul probably felt as though he fit in nowhere. Yet the disciple gave him the tender touch. Oh, what a word of encouragement. Now Saul, now, late in life, had been converted to the apostle Paul. Uh, he began to speak the words of the promises that God said. Uh, he reminded us that if there was anybody that labored, he said that I labor more. He said in stripes above measure. He said I was in prison more frequent than anybody. Of the Jews, five times I received 40 stripes, save one. Then I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I suffered a shipwreck. At night and day I've been beaten. In journeys often in perils of waters where robbers were. Paul said my life was always in danger. In, Go in Damascus under Aretas, the king, uh, they tried to kill me. But I was laid down in a basket out of a window. I was bitten by a snake. And he had a thorn in his flesh, but he continued to be able to praise God. I don't know how you feel, but that's good news that I'm still here. In spite of everything that I've been through, that I'm still here. Uh, do I have a witness in here? And since now he was still there, you got to remember to be obedient to the promises of God. Uh, for you know not what may happen to you. You never know when Noah obeyed the world. The world was saved. Uh, when Moses obeyed, the Israelites went free. When Joshua obeyed, the promised land was conquered. When David obeyed, Goliath died. When Gideon obeyed, the enemy was defeated. When Jesus obeyed, sin died and salvation became possible for all. You never know what your obedience to the will of God will accomplish in your life. Uh, now listen at Paul. A few years later in his life, uh, this same Paul who had the name of Saul, who was going around threatening Christians, uh, started relying on the promises of God. He began by saying, and we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God. To them who was called according to his promises, to have a witness in him. This same Saul converted to Paul. So what shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? This same Saul who was converted to Paul, say Romans 8:37. 
we're more than conquerors through him that love us. This same Saul, who converted to Paul, began to say for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory, while we look not at things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. This same Paul, when you had a loved one missing from around your dinner table, so for we know that it is earth the house of this tabernacle is dissolved, that we have another building not made by man, but eternal by God in heaven. This same Paul, who was converted from Saul, said, Be not deceived, for God is not marred, for whatever a man soweth, that shall he reap. This same Saul, who was converted to Paul, said, Let us not be weary in way of doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. This same Saul, who was converted to Paul, said, For by grace we are saved through faith, that not of yourselves it is a gift of God, not of works lest any man should boast, but it is a gift of God. This same Saul, who was converted to Paul, began to say, I can do all things uh, through Christ that strengthened me. This same Saul, who was converted to Paul now, began to say, my God will supply all of my needs uh, according to his riches and glory. I don't know how you feel, but I'm still here. Do I have a witness in here? I'm still here. I'm still standing. I'm still here. Is there anybody glad that as you move in 2017, you can say, I'm still here. I had some rough times in 16, but I'm still here. I had to cry some time, but I'm still here. The weight of the world is over, but I'm still here. Here, is there anybody here that are going to give God praise? Because you're still here. Is there anybody here almost lost your mind? But you're still here. Anybody had chemotherapy? But you're still here. Anybody had radiation? But you're still here. I wish you would put your hands together and somebody shout all over this place. I'm still here. I'm still standing. I'm still giving God praise. I'm still giving God glory. Shout, I'm still here. Had trouble in my way, but I'm still here. Lost my job, but I'm still here. Enemies on my track, but I'm still here. Shout, still here. Shout, still here. Shout, still here. Shout, still here. I dare you to give him the praise and tell him I'm still here. Been lied on, but I'm still here. Been lied about, but I'm still here. Been talked about, but I'm still here. High five your neighbor. Say neighbor. Say neighbor. Say oh neighbor. Tell him I'm still here. 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 Say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. Say oh yeah. Oh yeah. Shout still here. Shout still here. Shout still here. Shout still. Still here. Still here. Still here. Still here. Still here. Regardless of what you had to go through in 2016, it didn't break you. Because you're still here. We all have different issues. But aren't you glad that you're still here? We all have different struggles. My joy is that I'm still here. You know why I'm still here? Because God kept me. Huh? God kept me. God kept me. I made it. Because God kept me. Anybody had some challenges in 2016? Huh? Come on, let's be real now. Did you have some challenges this year? 
But aren't you glad you're still here? Aren't you glad you're still in the number? Don't you know it could have been the other way? But I'm still here. In spite of my past, I'm still here. God's been patient with me. I'm still here. I can trust his promises. I'm still here. Come on in with it, Reverend. That sounds mighty good there. There ought to be some witnesses there right there. There ought to be some witnesses there. testimony there Discipleship off of that song. Now, maybe someone here up under the sound of my voice on this first Sunday, first day of the new year. Want to step down now and give your hand to the pastor, but give your heart to God. You can come by letter by your Christian experience or candidate for baptism. We serve a whosoever will come, and whosoever will let them come. Because the only way that we made it that God kept us from one year to the next year. I'm still here. Not because of my own doing, by the grace of God. God has kept me. The door of the church is open as the choir continues to lead us. Yes.
It's prayer time at the altar. It's prayer time at the altar. Prayer time at the altar. Prayer time at the altar.